Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to use my favorite data sufficiency hack to answer a pretty hard 700 level question in under a minute. We'll go step by step so you can learn how to do it, and after you've got it, you're gonna be knocking down 700 level questions like they're nothing. Also, because you're here today, I have a free gift for you. Three strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the same three strategies I teach all of my private students. They're super effective. It's going to help you a lot and it's yours for free. Just download it in the description. Okay, let's move on to that example. Frankie is on a hot streak at the blackjack tables in Las Vegas. He has a total of $2,750 in chips. He has $5 chips red, $10 chips green, and $25 chips black. How many red chips does Frankie have? Okay, the first thing we always do is go to the question, figure out exactly what we've been asked to find, and write it down. In this case, we are being asked to find the exact value of R. Okay, next step. Go back to the question, see if we are given any equations. And in fact, we are. In this case, we're told that five times R plus 10 times G plus 25 times B equals 2,750. Okay, that means we have been given one equation, but we've been given three variables. So here's the strategy. We need the same number of equations as we have variables in order to calculate an exact value for R. So we have three variables, so we need a total of three equations. Now we've already been given one equation in the question stem, so we need two more equations. Let's see if either one of these statements gives us two more equations. Statement one says he has a total of 200 chips with twice as many green as red. Okay, what does that mean in math? He has a total of 200 chips. That means R plus G plus B equals 200. What does twice as many green as red mean? That means G equals 2R. We said that we needed two more equations, and guess what? Statement one gives us two more equations. That's sufficient. Statement number two. He has $1,625 in black chips. What does that mean in math? That means 25B equals 1625. We said that we needed two more equations, but statement two only gives us one equation. That's insufficient. And yes, you can actually solve this by counting the number of equations and counting the number of variables. And I know there are absolutely some people out here who don't believe me. So at the very end, I will show you the math and show you all the substitutions. And believe me, you don't want to do the math and the substitutions. You don't have that kind of time. You want to use this strategy instead. It will steer you in the right direction over 90% of the time. Okay, nice job. Okay, I can already hear some of you saying, hang on, just wait a minute. Are you telling me that counting equations and counting variables is all I have to do? Will that always work? And the answer is, yeah, it works really well in a lot of situations. Use this strategy when you are asked to solve for a specific value and a specific variable, and you're given equations in the statements, either actual math equations or equations in word problem form, like we were given in this example. This works about 90% of the time. Yes, occasionally they'll try and trick you, maybe 10% of the time. Don't get paranoid. Plus, if you keep watching, we'll show you how to spot when they're trying to trick you. Okay, for those of you who still don't believe me, I am gonna show you the math on how all of the substitutions work and how you can actually calculate the value of R. And believe me, you don't want any part of that on the test. You just don't have that kind of time. Okay, so here's the math I promised you, and believe me, you just don't want to be doing this on the test. You don't have this kind of time. Remember, data sufficiency is not asking you what the value is of R. Data sufficiency is asking you, do you have enough information to calculate the value of R? Nine times out of 10, you can tell if you do by counting the number of equations and counting the number of variables. Okay, nice job. Okay, great job. Remember, anytime the GMAT puts you in a data sufficiency situation and expects you to come up with a specific value for a variable, this idea of counting equations and counting variables is gonna be your best friend. Also, don't forget about your free bonus gift, three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. It's yours for free, just download it in the description. Okay, great job, we'll see you next time.